what is up YouTube welcome to the Ego Forestry Academy channel I am in Tapiramuta it's a city in Bahia it's kind of cold here today this is a high altitude city I'm at a about 800 and 850 meters or something so it's, uh, it's it's a bit colder here than the rest of Bahia and I was giving a course here in a, in a small farm, about 10 hectares big. It's the third course I give here. And I'm gonna give you a bit of a, I'm gonna show you around what we've done. It was a small plot for vegetable production mainly. So the, the purpose of the, of the property here, their goals, uh, are basically to to have dehydrated bananas as one of their main products. They also have some pigs, some chicken, some cows and a bit of vegetable production. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see it. So this is the plot that we we planted. Um, we have rows of trees Right, so this is a row of tree with, with some pineapples there. And this is another row of tree, trees that was already established. You can see there's some bananas here. This is a mahogany, there's some eucalyptus there. And then we have four beds. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And you've got the paths in between. So the idea here is they have about 700 square meters for vegetable production which is basically this part all the way up to that that door over there and this here so this is about 700 square meters which they're gonna be uh, planting in modules so the idea is to plant a f half a module or, or one module every 15 days this would be one module uh, of these four beds this guarantees constant production right so the idea if you're doing vegetables and you need to you need the vegetables to, to be to have a, a you need to have a constant supply of vegetables you want to do them every week or every couple of weeks so let's see uh, what we have here we've got in the row of trees bananas every two meters so each one of these marks is a banana plant that was planted. Um, and then we have in between each banana a pineapple. Here in the middle of the pineapple I'm gonna have I'm gonna have sunflower in every middle pineapple along with uh, with Guapuruvu, which is a fast growing tree. In between the pineapples right here I've got pigeon pea right here pigeon pea so sunflower with guapuruvu pigeon pea here and then i've got jack beans in every open space between pineapples and bananas on the edges of the tree row they're gonna plant some some herbs later on some uh, oregano basil uh, what else some mint anything that will maintain a green cover for the veg for the the trees bed this is uh, just a uh, an old lemongrass that was already here so we just uh, gave it a little bit of a prune you can see it's already sprouting nicely it's been two days since it's been pruned it's got a, already about like 10 centimeters of of growth and then on the vegetable beds we planted two of them with uh, four different consortiums and two of them with cover crops let me talk about the cover crops first because since th there's no reason for them to plant a lot of a lot of vegetables at once because they don't have they don't sell enough they don't consume enough so, but in order to, for, to, to make things easier and to, um, 
to make log logistics easier we already prepared four beds and added some some uh, cover crops here basically sorghum um, s sorghum sun hemp pigeon pea jack beans and castor beans so this was all so it was a seed mix we've got sorghum and castor beans in the middle and sun hemp with jack beans on the edges and then uh, pigeon peas also in the middle we also added some okra in these beds just to see if we can get some okra as a bonus and then here we've got four different consortiums like i said uh, each one occupies half a bed bed all of them have tomatoes as you can see we put a little uh, cassava cutting in order first to tie the tomato you can see it's kind of short it's not going to be enough to tie the tomatoes as it grows but we also planted some corn around so the idea of the cassava is to act as a support for the tomato only in the beginning after the tomato grows the corn will also uh, be big enough to hold it so basically we have lettuce with carrots so each one of these rows you can see we use the bananas it's one row of lettuce one row of carrots one row of lettuce one row of carrots uh, on the other one here which starts around here we have um, rockets which are already sprouting as you can see and it's been two days since we planted quite impressive <laughs> we've got rockets with um, leeks and beets I think that's it rockets leek leeks and beets here we have some more rocket sprouting it's pretty nice pretty nice over here we've got um, broccoli with radishes and I know that there are some radishes already sprouting as well here's one here's another here's another they're very fast it's been two days guys it's actually been le less than two days because we no it's been two days we planted a couple of days ago that's right um yeah so now let's go to the other one and then just for you to understand we have in this bed of of uh, broccoli and radishes we have four rows of broccoli going lengthwise on the bed and then on the two external rows we also have broccoli every 60 centimeters so it's a uh, four rows of radishes and then on the two external rows we have broccoli with it and then over here we have some collard greens in the middle every 50 centimeters and then we've got uh, coriander here in the middle and we have chives on like two rows of chives on one edge of the bed and then two rows of uh, how do you call it two rows of sage no not sage Uh, parsley seed. Parsley. Yeah, and then we have two rows of parsley here. 
Um, so that's that. So that's that. These are the consortiums that we're doing. Uh, we also have, like I said, we've got, like I said, we've got the banana trees around. They're going to be used for, of course, being cut down and feeding the soil and uh, feeding the, the beds with organic matter. The idea here is to never redo beds again. We're, we're just going to make sure we maintain it well covered, both with living plants and with organic matter that's going to maintain the soil structure so that the next time they have to the next time they have to plant they only have to do minimal soil movement incorporating just a little bit of manure superficially they don't have to do all the work that we did with a rototiller you know in 25 or 30 centimeters in depth there's not going to be any need to do that anymore so that's uh, you save labor, you save money, you save time, and you improve your soil all at the same time. Alright guys, so I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, check out our full Lego Forestry course. You're going to get acquainted with a lot of the terms we use here, a lot of the concepts and principles. And if you want to take a step further, support the channel, join us in our Patreon community. We've got some extra goodies there. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.